Swami Abhiskananda, Life. Henri Lestu, popularly known as Swami Abhiskananda, was born on 30th August 1910 in Brittany, France. From a very young age, he felt a calling to the priesthood. So in 1929, at 19, he decided to enter the contemplative life as a monk of the Benedictine order. As he wrote, what has drawn me from the beginning and what still leads me on is the hope of finding there the presence of God more immediately than anywhere else. When it is a matter of seeking God, I hope I shall not be disappointed. Though leading the life of a monk, he was seeking a more contemplative way of life. Soon he felt the call of India. Lesu contacted Father Jules Moshanan, who had worked in India since 1939. His reply was most encouraging. He wrote, Learn as much English as you can. You should have no objection to a purely vegetarian diet, essential for the life of a sannyasin. You will need complete detachment from the things of the West and a profound love for India. Having completed all the necessary formalities in the summer of 1948, Henri Lassu set off for India. The future Swami Abhiskananda reached the Indian East Coast through Sri Lanka on the 15th of August. Two days later, he met Father Moshanan in Kula Talai in Tamil Nadu. It took him several months to become acquainted with the new life. He wrote, India reveals herself to those who are prepared to be still and over a long period to listen humbly at close quarters to the beating of her heart. Only to those who have already entered sufficiently far into themselves, into their own depths, to be able to hear in the inner chamber of the heart the secret that India is ceaselessly whispering to them by means of silence that transcends words. For silence is above all the languages through which India reveals herself, imparts her essential message, the message of interiority, of that which is within. At the end of 1948, there was a great change for the good. An encounter with Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi at Arunachala brought forth what he said was a genuine retreat, as well as an introduction to true Hindu monastic life. The meeting with the Maharshi left a tremendous impact on Lasu. And from then on, he focused his spiritual search on an even deeper level by starting to realize the truth of Advaita. He wrote, Ramana's Advaita is my birthplace. In the sage of Arunachala, I discern the unique sage of the eternal India. During the following summer in 1949, Lesu and Moshanan had another and last darshan of the Maharshi. It was in those striking and austere surroundings around the Maharshi that he experienced the non-dual presence from the depths of his consciousness, making Abhishekananda declare in the later years, it was a real revelation. We can get a glimpse of the nature of this revelation from his description that followed, where he wrote, Anyone who is the recipient of this overwhelming light is at once petrified and shattered. 
He can utter no more words. He cannot think anymore. He just remains as being outside of space and time, alone in the very aloneness of the alone. On 21st March 1950, the two monks started the Shantivanam Ashram on the banks of the river Kavari at Kula Talai. At first, the original purpose was to found an Indian Benedictine ashram. An ashram, he later wrote, in Hindu form where Hindus and Christians would hold silent communion in the quest of the unique. The two monks adopted Indian names. Lasu became Swami Avishkananda, meaning bliss of the anointed one. They adorned the okra robes of sannyasins. Though a monk for 21 years, Swami Avishkananda was not fully aware that time of the implication of sannyas was a sacred Hindu tradition which should be received from a guru through an initiation ritual. He wrote, man's primary task is to enter within in order to encounter himself. Whoever has not encountered himself within himself has never encountered God. And whoever has not encountered God in himself has never encountered himself. No one encounters God apart from himself. God is he who is at the heart of all, at the source of all. So long as anyone has not entered that source within, is simply cherishing the external idols which he has created for his own petty imaginations. At the same time, Arunachala continued to attract him. So in March and April of 1952, two years after the Maharshi had dropped the body, he moved to a cave called Vanaati Guhe on the sacred hill of Arunachala for a 10-day retreat in complete silence. There, a spiritual experience was followed by further retreats. And it was during one such retreat in 1953 that he met Harilal H.W.L. Punja, Punjaji, popularly known as Papaji, and a disciple of Sri Ramana Maharshi. During his several stays in the caves of Arunachala over a period of three years, Abhishekananda met a number of people who helped him to immerse himself completely in the direct teaching of the Maharshi. In December 1955, Swami Abhishekananda visited Swami Gyanananda Giri at the Tirukulur, who gave him a spiritual and non-formal initiation. The only spiritual practice that the Giri recommended was jhana, meditation, saying, return within to the place where there is nothing and take care that nothing comes in. Penetrate to the depths of yourself, to the place where thought no longer exists. And take care that no thought arises there. There, where nothing exists, is fullness. There, where nothing is seen, is the vision of being. There, where nothing appears any longer, is the sudden appearing of the self. Jhana, true meditation, is this. Feeling more and more attracted to the Himalayas, the Swami undertook several journeys and pilgrimages. In a letter to his sister, he wrote, The Himalayas have conquered me, 
It is beside the sacred river Ganges that Shantivanam ought to have been. I do not know if that would ever happen, but how splendid it would be. With the passing away of Father Moshanan in 1957, and with no candidates having joined the ashram, Swami finally decided to leave Shantivanam ashram and settle as a hermit in the Himalayas. In 1968, he found Father Bede Griffiths, a British Benedictine, and handed over Shantivanam ashram to him. In 